Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here, and today I'm coming at you with a video that I think I wanted to make uh, very much because I had a particular player in mind who I want to talk about, and I really like this player, and I feel like he would have been a lot more uh, liked and well-known and talked about and praised if he would have had a few different scenarios go right for him in his career. And the player I'm talking about is Tracy McGrady. So T-Mac, for short, if you are unfamiliar with him, was a player who was in the league from 1997 until 2013, and he was a very prolific scorer in his prime. He led the league in scoring two different years. First career, he averaged around 24 points a game. Um, his best years, you'd probably say, were in Orlando in the early 2000s. He had a season where he averaged 32 points a game, 28 points a game, and then a few other seasons where he averaged like 26, 25. Very good scorer. And I'm just going to go through his career a little bit and talk about how timing played a huge part in uh, how unlucky his career was, and also just a few unlucky factors that hit his career in general, and just how it could have been so much more than it was, and how unfortunate it was that it turned out the way it did. So, um, he was drafted by the Raptors in 1997, and he had an okay career for them up until um, 2000. He played for them from 97 to 2000 when his rookie contract was up. In 1999 to 2000, uh, his last season with them, he averaged around 15 points a game. He was a decent player for them, the second fiddle to Vince Carter. He had uh, shown that he had improved his scoring and was continuing to improve his game overall. He was looking pretty good, and they thought that he could be a good number two to Vince going forward. Famously, those two are cousins in the league, and they were playing on the same team, which is pretty cool. But at that point... Um, T-Mac had decided that he wanted to go to his own team to kind of be the man, as you hear a lot of players say. He wanted his own team. He thought that he could really take over a team and be the lead guy instead of playing second fiddle to Vince Carter. And that's ultimately what he did. He left Toronto to go to the Magic. Now, this is the first time when he had bad timing in that um, the year afterwards, Toronto had a really good season, and they just narrowly lost like in the last final minutes to Milwaukee in a Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals, the second round, when everyone said that if they would have had T-Mac, they would have won that series and probably gone on to beat um, Philadelphia in the next series to have gone to the Finals. Uh, you know, I don't know about that, but he, it definitely would have made a big difference if he would have been in Toronto that next season, and they... I think that they probably could have gone to the finals. I mean, it's not a sure thing, but I think that they would have had as good of a chance as anybody. Probably would have been the one or the two seed for sure. And they could have made a huge splash and become like known nationally instead of just a good local team. So that was the first case of bad timing, that he left Toronto right before their best season when they were just playing the best ball that they would play during that Vince Carter era. And so then when he got to the Magic, another really... Uh, he had two unlucky things happen to him at this point. The first was that in that 2000, the year of 2000, the off season, they the Orlando Magic's plan was to sign Tracy McGrady, Grant Hill, and Tim Duncan all in free agency. So they had they had Tracy McGrady for sure. Then they got Grant Hill, who at the time had come off a season averaging 25 points, five rebounds, five assists a game around that, and then. They were so close to Tim Duncan, who uh, we all know about Tim Duncan, you know, one of the greatest players of all time. But apparently Doc Rivers said that his wife wasn't, or girlfriend at the time, eventual wife, wasn't allowed on the plane rides with the teams. And so then Tim Duncan, that was like the straw that apparently broke the camel's back, and Tim Duncan said, no, I guess I can't play for you guys. But he was like about to sign the papers, and his girlfriend was asking that, and then Doc said, no, you can't come on the plane rides with us, and... She, like, convinced Tim Duncan not to sign with the Magic. Something that not a ton of people know about, but was a big, a big, big deal. And so that was number one unlucky thing, is that if they would have had Tim Duncan, they probably would have been a dynasty in the East for the next five years at least. Now, number two. Uh, the year before this all happened, Grant Hill had signed a shoe deal with Fila, and apparently 
Fila basketball shoes actually really mess up your feet in that the way that they, um, sh they're not like high tops, I don't think, they're low tops, and so Grant Hill was always playing low tops, and so he started to develop a lot of ankle problems because those low tops aren't as good for your ankles, high tops are supposed to help you uh, not hurt your ankles as much, like if you're tw um, getting them rolled or something, they won't get sprained as often, so either way, when Grant Hill started wearing these shoes in this new shoe deal, he got a lot weaker ankles and was constantly getting injury problems on the Magic. And essentially, maybe only he only played like one season with Tracy McGrady where he played over 60 games. And the other years, he was playing like 20 or 30 games a season, which is really unfortunate. And so, really, the number two is that Grant Hill was never really fully healthy playing with Tracy McGrady, which is very sad. And so T-Mac had this stretch with the Magic where he was really the only legit player they had. And those are when he won his scoring titles. And so he played with Orlando between 2000 and 2004. And was just never the... Uh, they were never the playoff contender that Tracy imagined when he was told, you can sign here with Tim Duncan and Grant Hill. So that's number two on his unfortunate list, is that he lost in the first round every year he was there. They were always like the 8 or 7 seed, never like, like really fully contending. And like his talent was essentially going to waste. He had these like four amazing years where he was fully healthy every year and putting up monster numbers, but it was just like not enough to lift a pretty bad team besides that very far. And so then he got traded in 2004, in the 2004 offseason, for Steve Francis um, and Coutinho Mobley. So he went to Houston for those two guys, and they went to um, Orlando. And then uh, the unfortunate thing is that Orlando, that same offseason, drafts Dwight Howard, who is a very good player. Obviously, we all know what happened in his career. He is a seven-time All-Star and all that jazz. And so... I'm going to say this is number three of bad luck for Tracy McGrady is that he left the Magic right when they got the really, really promising young player who was going to blossom and become really good for them in the future. And he left right when that guy came, which is sad. And who knows what they could have been together. And also Grant Hill had his best season with the Magic uh, two years after Tracy McGrady left. And he had three actually healthy seasons in Orlando over seven seasons there. Or actually two healthy seasons, one like halfway healthy. And two of those three years were after Tracy left in like the three year span that he played after that, which is sad. And um, so then Tracy got to the Houston Rockets. And at this point with the Houston Rockets, this is when things started to get really unlucky as well in that uh, Tracy's body from just a number of reasons, started he started to become more injury prone. He had like two healthy seasons initially, but then he had an unhealthy season, and then he was healthy again the next year, and then the year after that he had a lot of injury problems, and and then it was always like the year that Yao Ming was really healthy and ready to go, Tracy had the injury, and then the year that Tracy was healthy, Yao Ming had an injury, and they really just never had a season where both were fully healthy the whole time. 07-08 was like the closest thing where they were basically both healthy the whole time, but then they lost in the first round of the playoffs, but they did have a 27-game win streak together, which is very impressive. But unfortunately, it all just, uh, or excuse me, a 22-game win streak, I think it was. But they just could never both be healthy, healthy at the same time, and thus their team never really reached its full potential. And then in 2008 to 2009, they added what I thought was like the missing piece in Ron Artest. So they were going to form somewhat of a big three between Artest and Tracy McGrady and Yao Ming. But then Tracy McGrady was injured essentially the entire season. And so that year was just like Artest and Yao Ming playing together, and then McGrady was unhealthy. That offseason, Artest left in 2009, and then it was just back to being Tracy and Yao Ming in Houston. Yao Ming goes down with an injury in 2009, and then it's just Tracy, and he's also basically past his prime after all these injuries have hit him. And he's only averaging around 13, 14 points a game at this point. And so then he got traded to New York. And he played out most of the 2009 to 10 season with the New York Knicks. And they were a bad team at this point, still like a lottery team, around a 30 win caliber team. And he averaged around 13 points, started all his games they played for them around 40. And uh, 
The unfortunate thing, too, is then, like, you look at this. He played for them from 2009 to 10, and then the next year, 2010 to 11, is the year that they finally get into the playoffs for, like, the first time in a decade. And he's there the year before. Now, again, this is he was probably only on the Knicks because he was an expiring contract and they wanted to free up cap space to get new players. But, like, he could have easily signed there for, like, the Vets minimum and played again with Amari Stoudemire and Carmelo Anthony. But it's just not how it went down. And so, unfortunately, he was missing out on those playoff runs with the Knicks um, when he could have been, like, a really good, like, six man for them, possibly. But at this point, he was really beat up and old and but de definitely past his prime. And then he played, like, a, a season with the Hawks at one point, a season with the um, Detroit Pistons. And he was just, like, kind of going through the motions, collecting checks, and then... He had a year where he played with the Spurs, and they went to the finals, and um, they got to Game 7, and then they lost to the Heat. And so Tracy, the one chance he had to get an NBA ring, they lost in Game 7. And so that's, I think, the final, um, the final straw as far as Tracy McGrady not winning a title and really just having a string of unlucky, thing happen, unlucky things occur in his career. So that's a bit about Tracy McGrady, guys. I just want to do a video talking about him and really how unfortunate his career was with both timing and injuries and just what team he got on um, certain years. I found it really interesting to go back and see, like, the next thing I never really thought about, how he got on that team right before they became a contender again. Um, the Spurs, even when I was making this video, I didn't think about that, and then that popped into my head right at the last minute before making this. Uh... Really just the magic is the saddest thing. If they could have had Grant Hill, Tracy, and Tim Duncan all coming into their primes together, the best years of their career, they could have, they would have easily beaten the Lakers in the finals, I think, when the Lakers were tearing through the East, uh, or tearing down the entire league during that point. And it's just sad to see that the potential was there, it just didn't end up happening, and it's just really sad. But T-Mac should not be forgotten. He had amazing skills and sadly a short prime because injuries cut him short. But if you don't know much about him, look him up. Look up some videos of his highlights. Look up some games that he played and how prolific of a scorer he was because he was a, an amazing talent and he should not be forgotten or underrated anytime soon. So that's all I got for you today, guys. Hope you found this interesting and I'll see you next time. Bye.